Hi, let's start now with the, um, with the solution for uh, the problem from the previous uh, lesson. We said there that the, um, that the GM is uh, having an overshoot exactly in the transition moment. Now uh, let's try to find the solution starting from the idea that we have to correct only this part so we don't care what is happening in the other range from zero to the bias and the bias to the VDD but just focus what is happening on the um, on the V bias threshold and to solve this we should do a kind of replica circuitry that is switching the current from one side to the other exactly in the moment when the main input differential pair is doing that which means we will have this schematic but on parallel with that we will build another one that is not, not used in the normal uh, application but is just for our loop to be able to detect this transition moment to be more clear let's make a new drawing here uh, with the um, with the um, both inputs NMOS and PMOS connected together like it was before don't worry if you don't understand the, initially the explanation it will be very clear uh, very soon so we have here the current source from the N side sorry from the P side and the N and P are connected together as inputs on the um, P MOS differential pair we have in parallel the additional auxiliary voltage called V bias in our case and this one is mirrored back to the NMOS so we have the schematic from the previous lesson this is an NMOS, PMOS let's put down some labels M1, M2, M3, M4, M5, M6 and M7 as I said the easiest way to detect the moment when the current, the biasing current is moving from the transistors M3, M4 and uh, to the transistor M5 is to build a replica circuitry that is having exactly the same inputs exactly the same bias and exactly the same I bias current let's do here in parallel just to be clear um, how the connections are done so we will have then the PMOS input pair with the bias current exactly the same uh, value I bias and with the uh, replica of the M5 transistor this one from here connected with the gate to the same V bias voltage so let's uh, put some labels here just to be clear this is M33 just to be clear that is the replica of M3 M44 M55 now since the inputs are connected together to the same values let's say here plus a plus and minus plus and minus we will know that in the moment when we have current in the m3 and m4 we have also the current in m33 and m44 and in the moment when we have current in m5 we also will have current in m55 but we say that we want to detect only the moment when the transition is done so since we don't care about the differential mode we can connect the drains together 
in here will have a current and here another current. So basically when the V bias is the same story like here. When the V bias is higher than the inputs of the op amp, the common mode voltage from the input of the op amp, then the current will flow through the M33 and M44. If the V bias is smaller, then entire current will flow through here. So now we have the currents on and off, but let's detect when they overlap. Basically, we have the currents in the, this region and in this region, but let's detect the transition. The easiest way is actually to create the delta, the difference between these two currents. And how can we create the difference between two currents is just simply by adding a mirror and then making um, the minimum between two values. And I will show you how it's done easily. So we draw here the mirror head. The same like before with the NMOS. Normal uh, NMOS transistor connected as a diode with the gate connected to the drain. But now, since we want just the transition moment, we should take this and mirror it. And then also one current from here and mirror it. But I will draw it here. And what will be the current flowing? Okay, let's put here some label E A E B. When we will have the current flowing here, EC, EC from compensation, for example. All of them are NMOSs, equal, equals, uh, equal sizes. Let's put some labels. Uh, M, um, six, seven, eight, M9, M10, M11. So we will have IC current only in the moment when we have currents into the A, I, A and B. Which means only in the moment when both mirrors are working. When both mirrors have a little bit of current. You don't need to have the entire current from the bias. You need a little bit. And this small amount is exactly what we need. Because this small amount is appearing only in the moment when you are at... Uh, equal values with the common mode of the op-amp and the biasing voltage. The, um, on the graph, how it will look like. So if you make here a drawing, the same like before, we have on the x-axis we have a voltage common mode at the input of the op-amp, we have 0 and VDD, and somewhere in the middle, doesn't really matter where, we have the V-bias this voltage. What will be the current? Here we have the currents. So, initially, when the V bias, sorry, when the common mode is very small, means the majority of current, actually the entire current, will flow through the M33 and M44. So we have the current IA. In the moment when you reach equilibrium, we have almost half-half. And then we'll drop for values higher than V bias. But then the entire current, I bias current, will be routed through the M55, M10, and it will appear here. So the, the value itself is I bias. Here is the A current. Here is the B current, IB. So we have uh, exactly detected the transition. And now the, the good part is that because we have this configuration with two NMOSs connected in series, we have IC current only when we have the overlap between A and B currents. If we make here the diagram, just to be easy, because otherwise if I make the drawing here, it will be too complicated to understand will be exactly the same, but then 
I see current will appear only here. The bias and um, common world, the same like like in the previous IC. And this is the IC current. And with this schematic, which is actually a replica of our input uh, differential pair, we detected the moment when we have the transition and we generated a current that is exactly appearing in the moment of the transition. And more important, since everything is matching, this current is exactly what we need to compensate our main circuitry. You have also to keep in mind that um, this current, IC current, will actually depend the slope on each side, the amplitude and so on, will depend on the corners, will depend on the technology, will depend on the um, on all the parameters of the transistor. So it is exactly something that is matching, that is good to use to compensate our main circuitry. And how to compensate it? Let's make here the drawing. If you remember we said our problem is that GM is flat and then it's having a bump and then it's flat again. GM total. Now, since we have here a current and we know that if we have more current, we have more GM, like in any MOS, you know that more current means more GM, we have to actually subtract a little bit of current from somewhere in this circuitry in such a way that GM is dropping. And since our shape of current and amplitude and so on is exactly matching our, uh, our circuitry, means it's okay to simply subtract it from one of the points, one of these branches, and in that moment everything should cancel, because if you subtract that amount of current that is creating this overshoot in GM, means everything will become flat. Let's see, from where we can subtract this current? Let's make here the drawing. We go and connect to where? The question. We cannot connect it here, in this net, because in the moment of the transition, we have even more current into the NMOS transistors, M1 and M2. We can connect it here. And if we connect it here, means that this biasing current will flow partially to the M6 and mirror it to the M7 and M1 and M2. And partially will go through the IC current. And if we make this connection, what will happen? I bias that, that is flowing through M5. We, from I bias, we will subtract IC current, and the difference will be mirrored here. So here we have actually I bias minus IC current, the compensation current. So the effect is that we subtract a little bit of current exactly in the transition moment. And the GM will have to drop. We don't know yet, just because we don't have the values of each transistor, we don't know yet how much it will drop, but intuitively we expect this to drop. Now, since we said that this is a replica circuitry, so we have exactly the same bias, exactly the same uh, differential input pair, exactly the same transistor sizes here, M8, 9, 10, 11, same value as M6 and M7. We can assume that this compensation current is enough to take the overshoot. So the effect is that 
we expect this line to be almost straight line, flat line. And in reality, this is what is happening actually. From if you remember from a previous lesson, we said that this increase can be something like forty percent. Now, in reality, you can have something like five percent, three percent, ten percent. Let's put five percent as an average. So you can decrease a lot this overshoot. Now another aspect is that if for whatever reason you have not an overshoot but an undershoot means let's say for whatever reason you are in this situation where you have a GM that is making a drop now you have to provide even more current just to increase the GM to move it here and what do you do in this moment? Since the current is always flowing in this direction, actually you cannot subtract, but you have to add. And in order to add, you simply connect this line, not here, but directly here to this net, to the sources of M1 and M2. And what will happen, you'll have I bias plus compensation current flowing in through this direction, down. And now from an undershoot in the GM, you'll have again a straight line, or almost a straight line. There will be always few variations. And now this is the most important aspect. With this replica circuitry, actually you compensate easily the over increase in the GM or under increase if whatever for whatever reason you have this problem. Usually is always over. Uh, Overshoot. I, I think only one time I saw this uh, problem with the undershoot. Usually you have an overshoot. Um, and uh, this is actually a quite nice solution with some drawbacks. And the main drawback is that you have to use a replica circuitry, which can be quite big in area. Because as you can imagine, since it is an input pair, the NMOS and the PMOS are quite big because you need the big GM for the input pair. This M33 and M44 can be also big. M55 should match with M5. M33 and M44 should match with the M3 and M4. Biasing currents should match, should be exactly equal the sizes, and so on. So to have two times, almost two times in area, the input stage is quite big sometimes, but if you really want accuracy, if you really want to have something that is full rate rail almost perfectly linearly, uh, linearly uh, linear GM, then uh, yeah, I, uh, I don't know other solution, but I think this is the best. And it's quite easy because it's easy to understand and it's easy to implement. You don't need a lot of mathematical formulas to, to understand this and to implement it easily. Okay, uh, let's uh, continue now with the next lesson where we will um, discuss a little bit about the um, other aspects related with the input uh, input stage.